I would now like to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Alexander Yule. He is a medical oncologist and PhD candidate with a keen interest in primary brain cancer tumours. Dr. Yule gained his medical degree from the University of New England and is currently working in the Oncology Clinical Trials Unit at Royal North Shore Hospital. He is currently enrolled in a PhD in primary brain tumours, focusing on targeting the molecular pathways as a treatment avenue. It's our pleasure to welcome him this evening to give us an overview of some of his research and work in molecular analysis. So while the, that's loading, I guess I'll just say a bit about myself. So my name's uh, Alex. I'm a, a medical oncologist at Royal North Shore with the uh, work in the trials department. So there's sort of three, here we go, here we go. Sort of three spokes, I guess, of the wheel that I'm living in at the moment at the center is, uh, so it would be my family, so that's my wife and our one-year-old daughter, Mira. That's, we recently were lucky enough to go to Northern Territory. Uh, it's Sunset at Ubir, which I highly recommend. Um, and uh, this is a excellent, our excellent trials team at Royal North Shore Hospital, not that I'm biased. Uh, and uh, shout out to two of our coordinators today who have come here as well, so thank you very much. So um, I work there in clinical trials. And then the other sort of spoke is PhD and, and research, particularly in, in brain cancer. And uh, these are two of my um, uh, PhD supervisors, Dr. Adrian Lee and Dr. Amanda Hudson, who I'm very lucky to have uh, the support of for my uh, research and my PhD. So I guess uh, ongoing th one of the themes tonight that, that has been touched on already is the challenges in brain tumors. Uh, we don't know what causes them. There's uh, 100, over 100 different kinds. If you think back to uh, Professor Buckland's uh, slide with all those diagnoses, um, it's hard to collect all the cells when doing, when doing the surgery um, initially. And uh, although we've had a lot of success in immunotherapies and other cancers, uh, such as melanoma, uh, it's been hard to find those that can control uh, 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 primary brain cancers uh, and it's tricky also finding other treatments such as chemotherapies that are effective. So I guess touching again on the on molecular oncology and the molecular uh, biology of cancers uh, that Prof Buckland's already uh, given an excellent talk about um, but our body is made up of cells. Uh, the cells are made up of proteins which do the structure, the coding and, and everything and then those proteins are, are coded for by genes that are packed in these envelopes called chromosomes. And these genes are in turn made uh, by DNA. So that breaks down that the DNA is the blueprints for our cells. And it's those blueprints going awry that causes, that causes cancer. So not all tumors are created equal. And this is where understanding uh, molecular, how the different genes are, uh, affects the cancer. So you might be, su be surprised, but there's, actually not three dogs there, one of those dogs is actually a cat. <laughs> and that's what molecular biology does, that's what looking at the genes are. So under the microscope, they all look the same, just like they all look like dogs, but then you realize that one of them is actually a cat dressed up as a dog. And that is, that's where this, uh, why it's so important to look at the molecular biology and why there's this shift in, in understanding uh, cancers, especially brain tumors in that way. Uh, so, again, this is touching on, on uh, what Professor Buckland spoke about, but as oncologists and pathologists, we love putting things into boxes because when we put things into boxes, we can help predict how they react, how they respond to treatments, and what drives them to then help us get targeted treatments. So initially, we just looked on the microscope and says, it looks like this cell, it's an astrocytoma, it looks like this cell, it's an oligodendroglioma. But then we realized that to get, there were still groups in those, those buckets that were still cats dressed up as dogs. So how to help find that out, we do more deeper looking at the genes. And this is where this, um, the next sort of step was, and particularly looking at IDH mutations. And that's taken a further step looking now at this CDK and 2A and B genes, which are getting even more precise and even more cleaner uh, groups of and uh, tighter boxes to put things in. 
So the, the first major step was these IDH mutations. So they occur in younger people. Most can be found uh, with stains, but to find all of them, we really de do need those molecular next generation testing that uh, Professor Buckland was talking about. The discovery of this gene is now leading to new, new drugs to target that, to take advantage of that mutation, to use that mutation against the cancer. We've found that although most of them behave in a more uniform way, some, uh, some, mutation, some uh, brain tumors with IDH mutations still behave even more poorly and very aggressively. And this is, most of those have been found to, to have uh, the CDK and 2A uh, deletion of this gene mutation. So what is it at a glance? So uh, normal cells have breaks, just like a train has breaks. And when they're missing, you lose the, 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 the brakes. So you get a runaway train. So I Googled runaway train. Apparently, it's a movie that did really well on IMDb. So I'll look that up when I, I'll watch that when I'm finished. But essentially, when you lose this, these breaks, the, the, the cancer cells grow and grow and grow. And this mutation, this, this alteration is so distinct that it leads to its own group of... Um, of brain tumors inside the IDH group. And we, we tend to lump them together currently with standard therapy, but, but should we? Because they act differently and they have different gene mutations in them. And there's growing evidence that perhaps they need, diff need to be treated differently or have different types of treatments. So this goes into, into my research, and this is what um, my PhD is on, is how should we be treating these CDK and 2A uh, deleted um, astrocytomas or brain tumors? And I, uh, I'm planning to do that with four questions, though. I've been told that um, PhDs never go to plan. So first one is how are people actually treating that? So there actually aren't any guidelines on how we treat these tumors. Um, so I'll, I'll, uh, in the process of sending out surveys to targeted neuro-oncology centres uh, in, in Australia to actually get an idea of how, how should we, or how are people currently approaching that. Then once we know, th know that, we then can say, well, out of these treatments, which ones are the, are the more effective treatments? Which, which ones are having better results? Uh, and in, in particular, we're looking at uh, tumours uh, in our, um, our, our tumour bank and uh, in our brain tumour bank linked with the brain cancer um, group tumour bank as well and working with our radiation colleagues with um, Professor Back and his team to look at, at how they respond not only to chemotherapies but to radiation therapy. Then what we want to do is, is look at how these, di are there different chemotherapies that we could use to treat these cells, to treat these tumours? And we, we do that in a special way, which I'll talk about in, in, a, in a second by growing them in the lab. And then once we've looked at, well, the chemotherapies that we've got, are they effective? Are there other chemotherapies which we should be using? The fourth sort of step is to say, well, are there future targets? And particularly looking at targets to, um, help immunotherapies uh, be more effective and look at how these tumours are manipulating their local environment that we can use that against them just like people are using the IDH mutation against gliomas. So this is a, a summary of um, the first sort of step. So I've contacted all the major neuro-oncology um, centres in Australia and the people in green are the people that test um, for mutations in uh, or that have reported to, to test mutations. Um, in addition to the, the brain cancer um, group and the, the biobank uh, as part of the collaboration that we have, there's also the Sydney Brain Tumor Bank that um, Prof Buckland's uh, uh, leading as well that have very kindly been extremely helpful in collaborating with this project. And looking at all of, all of this, um, we've also, all, all sites listed will be approached with the survey and then we've got the actual outcomes of all these patients uh, with these mutations. And um, with the exception of a few sites um, that we're still in the process of getting involved, we've actually got probably most patients in Australia that we've identified this mutation in and created probably the largest data bank for this, this um, cancer group. So then what we want to do is then look at which treatments being used are, are, being, are most effective. And to do that, we need the largest sample size possible. So um, Professor Mustafa Kazroor at um, Duke University is kindly collaborating with us 
So we pull our database with their database and then hopefully try and have a look at which, which treatments, which chemotherapies and radiation uh, protocols are looking like that are being used that are the most effective. So then the, uh, the other, the trickier, or one of a tricky component of it is, are there other chemotherapies available that we can use uh, that might be more sensitive to, uh, to treat these, um, these cells? So what we do is this sort of pinky, pinky stuff here is, is actually growing cancer cells in the lab. So we grow them up and we need to put the mutations into them that simulate this CDK mutation. So we do that by, by putting in this, this nifty little thing called um, uh, uh, short or small interfering RNA or short hairpin RNA that essentially blocks the CDK into a gene. And so it simulates the mutation. And so by doing that, we can then create a, a model that we can then test with what's called high throughput screening. So we grow up these cells and then we expose them to different chemotherapies to see is there a chemotherapy that we could use that would be more effective. Then the, the fourth sort of um, approach to it is to look at, well, are there other treatments that are yet to be made or discovered that we could use to help manipulate this, this group? So what we start with is we want to look at how it, it is manipulating this specific, these specific gliomas the, with the CDK and 2A genes. How are they manipulating their local environment? So we've actually got massive uh, public, publicly accessible um, sequencing banks that people have got de-identified data. So we've in the process and we've done this already, we've accessed that data and we're finding differences in the way these gliomas interact with the surrounding brain tissue to other cancers. So that's really exciting because we can then use our own samples from these sites, um, from some of these sites, particularly from our own biobank, to then uh, test this and, and show that there's the same difference. And once we do that, we can then look at targeted differences and get these really pretty pictures that look at different markers in the tumor and different environments. And once we do that, the next step would be looking at ways to turn that against the tumor. Um, and, and hopefully launch further, um, uh, further treatments and, and targeted uh, 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 treatments and trials in, in this area. So in, in summary, uh, the progression of molecular, molecular analysis has led to major leaps forward, especially in brain tumors. Um, it's led to more and more subtypes, cleaner, better understanding, uh, the ability for more targeted treatment. Um, but further research is needed for these groups, um, including the CDK and 2A, um, uh, and 2A B deleted gliomas, uh, which I think is an, an, a real area of need at the moment because there's, we actually don't know how to treat this group. So through our research, we hope to further understand of these tumors, identify optimal treatment regimens, and then flag uh, novel market or markers for novel treatments in the future. So uh, my primary supervisor, Helen Wheeler, um, added this slide in. I think she's trying to tell me something. Um, but I've been very fortunate to have um, a number of helpers and a number of supervisors, um, and I'll hopefully be able to guide me through this, through this project. Um, it includes um, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Wheeler, Professor Back, uh, Dr. Adrian Lee, Dr. Amanda Hudson, and everybody at the, the Colling and Royal North Shore Hospital but also in particular um, the Brain Cancer Group data bank, which uh, uh, my colleague Jackie will be talking to us in more detail, um, is crucial to my research and it wouldn't be possible to retrieve, retrieve the amount of, of data that we are able to retrieve without the, the, uh, this data bank. Uh, and uh, our neuro-oncology team, radiation oncologists, medical oncologists, um, and yeah, I suspect uh, I may have bitten off more, I, more than I could chew, just like this picture here, but um, I think uh, it's also very exciting and it's, it's a pleasure to be involved in, involved in this research. Thank you. Any questions?